You know, I love to fish top water year round, but there is two favorite times to fish. My number one favorite time is actually what most people refer to as the dog days of summer. It's when the fish have been deep for most of the summer, but in a lot of lakes you lost your oxygen deep, the thermocline has gotten bad, and so the fish are actually moved up and are suspended. The other time is mid-spawn to early summer fishing, which is basically post-spawn. We've got a lake here that's still on the rise, even though it's the late spring, early summer. And the thing you gotta remember is that'll hold those fish up that have been shallow during the spawn anyway. And the reason it holds them up is because of this, because that, that flooded vegetation will attract a lot of little sun perch, a lot of brim, uh, and, and a lot of shad. And that will keep the fish up. Another good reason to, uh, to fish topwater. What we're starting on here this morning, and one of the things I'm, I'm gonna to try to determine here this morning is what type of banks these fish are, are using. Are they using still on these sloping banks that are, or have, has a few of these flooded uh, buck brush on it? Uh, as you can see, this bank has a, a little a gentle slope to it. We're sitting about 11 to 12 foot out here, and we're, you know, off the bank. Uh, we started on the point, and we're, work, we're gonna work down to that next point. Uh, so what I'm trying to determine is if, if, the, if the depth of the bank is going to be important this morning. So as we progress, we'll work some banks that'll be a little bit more vertical than this. These fish will move 20 to 30 foot to this bait. So I can get down to this point, I can work out on this point, and even though I'm over 20 to 30 foot of water, it can, this, unlike a lot of techniques, can still be very effective. Because 20 to 30 foot, it's only three times higher than a basketball goat. A bass can cover that distance in about a second and a half, probably. That, I mean, it doesn't take him anything if he wants to come to a bait that far. A lot of people think 30 foot, man, that's a long ways. Fish ain't gonna move that far. In clear water, that's an easy move for a fish if, if, you, if you're around aggressive fish. Everybody says, what's your favorite lure? Uh, any bait that creates a visible strike is my favorite lure. Surely, more often than not, that's a top word, but there are other lures like uh, waking a spinner bait that will do that. My favorite bait over the years has become the little bitty chugger. The one I use now is a Japanese bait called the Rico. And actually, when I'm fishing it, it usually takes me uh, probably about 30 minutes to really get into the rhythm of, of fishing it right. See, I can fish it the old traditional way. That's the old traditional way. Boom. Let it sit. Boom. And that'll work at times, that will work. I'm not saying that's not a good technique, but when, what separates this bait again is, is, is usually is when you get to start to get to walking, stop, and it's actually a spitting sound. I don't want to hear it bloop very many times. I want to hear it spitting. So there's little subtle things about this bait that have to be right for it to work perfectly the way I like to work it. Not only does it have to have this you know, very little of a, of a bottom bill to make it do that spitting sound, I like heavier pound test line with it, preferably the line that floats a little more than the others, like monofilament. I tend to use, tie it with it and leave a big tag on it. And, and when a lot of guys don't like a big tag because they think it affects the way a bait works, and it does sometimes. And I push the knot to the very bottom of the bait so it comes off like that. This improves the ability of, to create that spitting sound that I desire. I've always done that with the originals and even to this day. So occasionally I have to look at it when I'm fishing, or especially after you catch a fish, make sure you haven't pulled that, that back straight like that. So what I'll do is I'll bring it back down to the bottom and that actually encourages it to, uh, to spit and walk more than, than doing the chugger. We're approaching a, a point here now, and really I think that's going to be the key feature of the day. Uh, most time after the post spawn, uh, the fish uh, will normally start moving back out toward the secondary and the main in the main points. How deeper they're going to be is going to be the next question. And it, it's another good thing about topwater, especially in a clear lake like this, is that right now we're fishing from the bank, which is shallow, out to the boat, which is you know around 11 foot. What I'm going to do on this point with this top water is I'm gonna actually fan cast from shallow all the way out to deep off the point. Because these fish normally this time of year 
could be shallow or they could be out there suspended over 25, 30 foot of water waiting for schools of shad to come by. That one only moved it about twice when he got it, and that's a smallmouth. That's the other thing I like about the top water is that it, it really does do a good job of all, on all three species of bass and stripers and white bass and everything else. The other real key though, and even though I'm taking my time because I don't, I don't want to hurt him, but it's normally is to get back out pretty quick because these fish normally are running in wolf packs right now. So where there was one, there's usually more somewhere around it. The surprising thing about this technique is that growing up, especially topwater fishing, I always heard the best time was early and late, early in the morning, late in the afternoon. And in, in a lot of cases, that's, uh, that's still true. But I don't know why, but with this particular little bait and this technique, I have found that, that sometimes the best days are the brightest days and the hottest days and dead in the middle of the day. Since this lake is coming up, and I've already noticed a lot of brim and, and minnows using that shoreline cover that's being flooded, uh, I'm going to go ahead and work the back of the pocket here to, to see if it's holding any largemouth still. Uh, a lot of times it, it will keep them longer if the lake is high than if it was falling like you would normally expect in early summer. I'm really going to work a little bit of everything here this morning until I really get a good feel for what I think the, the more the fish are doing. changing the water here a little bit. We're leaving the flatter points. I'm moving over here to, the, to a bluff, what we call a bluff end. Deeper water near the bank. Also, this bank's still gonna be holding some shade. The spook, I, I normally throw fairly heavy line. I'm usually throwing 17 pound to 20 pound monofilament. The speed I work it at and the amount of line that's actually in the water, uh, I really don't think the flat line gives you any advantage. And, if the big fish comes out of that tree and, and gets that bait on the other side of it, I got the heavy line to get him out of there. And definitely everybody that fishes spooks know that that happens. But it's a big fish bait. It generates quite a few big bites. And the closer you can get to the cover, sometimes the better, you, the more bites you get. I'm a heavy line fisherman. I fish the heaviest line I can get away with. There he is. See, he come right out of that tree, and I, I basically did not allow him to go down. He's not a large fish, but still it could have been. So that's the whole reason to use the heavier line. We're getting about 11 o'clock right now, and um, the wind's been steadily picking up since about 9 o'clock. We've gone to the, the bigger baits uh, to get a little more distance, and also we got a little, a little heavier ripple on the water. We seem to get a little more consistent action when we get on these deeper bluff banks, especially if they got a little bit of wood on them, old standing cedar trees or hardwood. It's a similar bank to the, the earlier bank that we caught some fish off from. Ah, little squirt. There's one of those chunkers. Give me a little fella. These fish really haven't progressed as much out of these spawning pockets as you might think. And so I really just started looking for the things that post-spawn fish hold on once they finish spawning in these pockets if they haven't moved all the way out to the main channel. They're either going to be on those points that lead out of these spawning pockets, or they're going to be on some type of major complex cover. And the docks is the only thing that's in here. He's got a bruise, doesn't he? Got a little leftover bruise from the spawn. He's got all tangled up now.
kind of watch the bait to get your proper rhythm down on when you snap again because you want it to turn before you snap again. If you want a real wide wobble, you then you do it slower. Snap, feed line back, snap, feed line back. And you, and you see it's making real wide turns. Did I see that one under it? Oh my goodness. Man, I watched him come up there and get a hold of that. I didn't know. If, I didn't think he'd hit it because I thought we were we were too close to him. But uh, but he did. I, mean, I, I want to be gentle because he's got one in the throat and that's a, not a good spot. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna wait until he tires down. Okay, one more. That should be all you have. You shouldn't have any more left. All right, that was easy enough. That demonstrated the wide wobble, and sometimes that's what you want, that real deliberate wobble from side to side and kind of slow. And that fish came up on it once, came up on it twice, and got it. Now, the other one I use quite often in clear water, and it's, uh, it's, it's really a lot snappier. You see, it's not quite as wide. It's a lot, lot tighter and a lot faster. I might pause it like at the edge of that dock there and keep coming with it. But that's not that real wide wobble like we had a minute ago like that. If I had to start tomorrow, let's say, and fish a tournament, knowing what I know right now, I would do something different in the morning. I'd go on this topwater bite starting about 11 to 2, and then I'd fish something else maybe from 2 on. Now, if the bite lasted longer, let's say it, it was hitting real good at 2, then I might fish it a little bit longer. But that's generally the way you use a topwater bite. It's kind of a, a complementary technique to other techniques.